Hey, I'll be on screen in a minute. Hey guys, I'm off screen. I'll be on screen in five seconds. <laughs> so I've never done the thing that Tim showed us where you use a laptop for the comments. So I'm gonna try it and I'm gonna see what happens. So I started about three seconds early. First lesson is turn off the speaker on your laptop. <laughs> the delay is distracting. Hey guys, can y'all hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? Can you see me okay? We're gonna do that first. <laughs> hey Jess, Cookie, Erica, hey guys. I'm watching the clock over there, if it's working. I think it's working. No, it's not working. I'm gonna watch the clock though over here then. Loving the Jameson. <laughs> yeah, these are my pandemic um, survival uh, supplies. Kills all the germs inside and out. <laughs> I need to block that. And there's nothing in my cup either. <laughs> so I'm gonna give it about five minutes. So sound is good, video is good, all's good. Okay, well, first thing I wanted to say was thank you. Um, not just for tuning in to watch me is always kind of cool. It makes you feel good. But um, the main thing is thank you for how amazingly supportive and cooperative and helpful and wonderful y'all have been for supporting, you know, all the presenters that we've had this week. It has been incredible and it was way more than I expected and way more than I hoped for. And I'm just, I'm, I'm really proud of our community. It makes me feel good. So thank you. Um, I appreciate y'all sharing everything. If somebody will share this video to uh, Clay Buddies for me, I know it's up, but sometimes people won't see it unless somebody shares it. Um, so if somebody would share it, that would be cool. I forgot to ask my uh, backup to do that for me. <laughs> anyway, um, my name is Stacy Morgan. I'm a full-time potter and sculptor, or was before this lovely pandemic. Um, and what I'm gonna share with you is my method for um, no need to block. Yeah, no need to block anybody. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn off the comments for a minute so I can stay focused. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna show y'all my method for adjusting slip, for making and adjusting slip. And I use slip for everything. I use it for joining things. I use it for color. I use it for texture. I use it for trailing. Um, and so what I was gonna show you is just the method for making it and adjusting it, but I'm not gonna show you the actual application because somebody else has already done that and y'all can figure it out, you know, that part of it yourself or you can come to workshop with somebody. There's a whole bunch of people that do it. Um, it's more about kind of troubleshooting it and getting rid of those problems like cracking and peaking and things like that. So um, I'm going to get right into this pretty quickly because it's gonna take a little while. I'm gonna do it real time. Um, so I won't be able to answer the questions except for like, maybe when I'm running the drill, it's going to get really noisy. Um, but I will stop every few minutes and ask if there's any questions. So if you ask me a question just when it's running, I will not be able to answer it, even if I can see it, because that drill is going to be loud. <laughs> so, um, any questions before we start? Hey, Arlene. Hey, guys. And I am sipping whiskey. I promise I'm not just day drinking for fun. <laughs> My throat, if you can't hear it, is still a little froggy. It's getting better. But if it starts cracking, um, I'm, totally, I'm totally day drinking. Never mind, I'm totally day drinking. <laughs> so are there any questions right off the bat? I'll give it about five minutes. I'm happy to see you too, Marina. Hey, Eddie. Hey, guys. Hey, everybody. <clears throat> Breaking out the big guns. <laughs> it's quarantine. We're all day drinking. <laughs> okay. So, the way I make my slip, I'm going to jump right into it. And this screen will shake a little bit. There's no way around it with this setup. Um, uh, you're welcome, Nita. Jameson. I'll get into that, Erica. But I, I do use the clay that I'm using today will be B-Mix. It's Laguna B-Mix, no grog. 
okay? I'll get into the slip bottles at the end of it, but it's, a, it's one that I get from a supplier off Amazon, um, but I order in bulk. ABC boards are open for a reason. Okay, cool, I'm jumping right into it. So I'm gonna close off commenting on the camera. If y'all will let people know why cephalopod, why not? <laughs> Cthulhu. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, I'm gonna close off the commenting so I can get started, quit messing around. And I will come back and ask, uh, answer questions in a minute. If you guys will let people know that I'm going to come back and answer them, that would be great. Okay, so that's out of the way. So when I start with my reclaim, or when I start, slip, typically I will use my reclaim. I don't like to waste anything in my studio. I like to be efficient and reuse things as much as possible. Um, so I will start with my reclaim. I will put all the scraps in a bucket. And I just fill up a five-gallon bucket and let it dry. You know, as much as possible completely and then I'll cover it all the way up to the top with water let it slight down same way you always do reclaim but you know when you're doing your reclaim it'll kind of separate out and you'll get that little layer of water on the top I will um, take that water off of the top and the reason I do that is I want to start with as thick of slip as possible I mean ungodly thick so thick that there's no way you'd ever get it through um, a slip trailer. I'm looking for the consistency of kind of like cake batter or brownie batter. Um, basically, I'm starting like this. It's super, 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 super thick. Um, and the reason I'm starting that low or that thick and that low water is because the number one problem that I see most people having with um, slip is that when it dries, it flattens out and they lose half of the dimension that they put on there. And that's like so disappointing to me. Um, I had a lot of problems with that when I first started. And so I started you know, researching on YouTube, trying to find things that would make it work. And I found John Britt's video on deflocculation and flocculation of slip. And that was really helpful. So I took what he demonstrated and started playing with it to kind of get it right to where I wanted it so that I had the most control over it as possible. Um, super, super, super. <laughs> and I'm going to show you a couple of different things. Uh, it's thicker than chocolate pudding even. So clearing off the comments really quick. If you can see this plate, this is pretty thick slip. It's thicker than normal trailing. And then I'll do things like this. Can you see it? That are more classic slip trailing. You know, just little pretty thin lines, real delicate. Then I'll do things like, oh, this. Can you see it? Mm. <laughs> I can't really get it in front of you, which is kind of a mixture. Can y'all see these okay? Hello? I will also use it as a joining slip for mugs and different pieces. I'll use it colored as a colorant. Until I've been experimenting a lot lately, all my work is different. I'll use it for dimension and texture and more colorant. I'll use it for trailing. And I don't know if you can quite see the dimension. These dots are really, really high. They're about, the biggest one is almost a quarter inch off the pot. And if you'll notice, there's no peaks on there. <clears throat> More regular trailing. <coughs> and then last but not least, I'll use it for the texture on my sculptures. This is one of my sinks. Um, and I use it a lot for texture and dimension on my sculptures. I can't see the big sculpture back behind me of the, the figurative stuff, but I actually use it for things on the faces and in the hair and things like that too. So tr uh, slip trailing is a lot more versatile <laughs> than just making pretty lines. What do I color with? I'll get to that later. I'm actually not gonna go over coloring in detail because that that's like a four hour workshop. <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna flip y'all downward so you can actually see as I mix and then um, I'll get started. And the lag from here is gonna be Really great, so I won't be able to see questions at all. I'm going to be looking at my laptop, and it's about 30 seconds behind. Oops. If I can get y'all over there. 
Okay, can you all see this bucket okay? Let's see if I can squish it in. Ah, there we go. I'm gonna give it a minute to adjust and catch up so I can see y'all on the laptop. Somebody asked about the sink. Um, I threw that, all my stuff is thrown by hand. Thank you, Jim. Y'all, thank you for helping me ask, answer questions. That's gonna be very, very helpful. Okay, so I'm gonna get right into it. Um, there's the Zoom. Okay, so now we're on delay. I can't see anything you're saying. Y'all can see how thick this is. Obviously, this is not the thickness that you would normally use for trailing. And again, you can even see it from that dimension, how thick it is. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do, I've taken off the water, I've blended it up. Can y'all see how there's really stiff peaks in there? Um, I use a lot of bacon analogies because everybody can understand that. Um, and y'all totally just saw my roots, I'm so sorry. Um, but you can see how it's like stiff peaks, a little bit heavier than heavy meringue, um, cake batter-ish, but it definitely holds its own weight. I want it slightly thinned down from that. I take the water off because I want as little water as possible um, so that when the water ev evaporates, the dimension doesn't go away and it stays thick, but I do want it thin enough that it blends well. So I'm gonna add just a touch more water to it. And I mean a touch, I'm talking like quarter cup at the most. That's about right. It's a little looser, a little bit nicer, um, and easier to work with. So the next thing I'm gonna do is deflocculate this slip. And the reason I deflocculate is because it's going to loosen that slip and make it more fluid without adding water. So I'm not gonna lose any dimension. And I'll show you what it looks like. This is a little container of, whoop, that's sodium silicate, wrong thing. Grab this one. <laughs> this is a little container, if you can see it. Ooh, okay, there we go. I'm not used to doing this upside down and it's so delayed I can't see it. This is Darvan 811. It's my favorite deflocculant to use just because it's more stable. It's a little bit more potent. It's gonna work on iron clay bodies. It's gonna work on porcelain. It's gonna work on any clay body. So it's really, my favorite to use. I can mix up a batch and put it in a sealed container and it'll last for months, you know, without really changing consistency as long as that water doesn't get in there. My clay body is a little thixotropic, so it will kind of look solid, but as soon as I mix it up, it will um, loosen back up. Somebody asked about the drill bit a long time ago. This is just a good old, you know, paddle bit or mixer bit from um, Harbor Freight. I think I paid about $6 for it. The deflocculant is Darvan 811. You'll pay less than $10 for a pint, and a pint will last you forever, even if you use enough, uh, or as much slip as I do. So y'all watch this. Deflocculation, the easy way to remember the difference between flocculation and deflocculation is flocculation, think of the particles coming together, like a flock of sheep. The sheep come together, and it's hard to move them. Deflocculation, it forces the flock of sheep apart. It makes them looser and easier to move. So watch this, you see how thick this is? And you saw that a quarter of a cup loosened it just a little bit. So watch, I'm gonna add one, two, three drops of Darvan. Now watch how much this loosens up. When you do this, you have to mix really, 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 really well. You've got to repeatedly mix it just to make sure that Darvin gets all the way through. Because you saw I just added three drops. Look already how loose, much looser this is getting.
And I really hope the camera's high enough that this doesn't splatter on your camera <laughs> or on the camera and block your view. I'm going to pray that it doesn't. So that's a little bit better, but you can see it's looser. It's smoother. Can you see? Whoops, there it goes. But it's still too thick to trail. Obviously, that's not going to trail. If you try to trail with this, even if you could get it out of your trailer, it's going to leave a big old nasty chocolate chip. I don't like chocolate chips. People say that you can just go back and wipe them off. Like when it's bone dry or leather hard, you can go back and wipe it off, which that does work. But like I said, I like to be kind of efficient. I don't want to spend my time having to go back and wipe those off again. Um, after I slip trail, I want it done. Boom, just done. So I'm going to keep loosening it up. I'm going to add one. Well, that's about two or three. We'll say four drops. <laughs> liquidator juice. That's funny. <laughs> so that's what, we're up to about eight drops now. Now look at it. It's starting to hang off that finger a lot more. Whoops. There you go. Still, it's getting really smooth. And the consistency is changing just from those four drops. It gets kind of a slick, rubbery feeling to it. It's bizarre. All right, so that's not quite there yet. It's still too thick. I'm going to add a few more drops. It's about two, three, four. There we go. And the reason I'm adding this a drop at a time is very specific. If you over deflocculate, it will have the opposite effect. Deflocculation works on a curve. Um, so you'll deflocculate, it'll get going, it'll get loosened up, and you'll go, ooh, I'm gonna do a little bit more. And then all of a sudden, it'll seize back up on you after it sits a little bit. Um, that means that you've over deflocculated it. You don't want that. You want it just to approach, you know, the perfect point and then stop. Already related it to sheep, Tim. Somebody asked, I can see the comments a little bit as I'm, I'm going right now. Somebody asked if sodium silicate is okay to use. Um, I've tested Darvan 7, I've tested soda, sodium silicate and soda ash and I've done uh, Darvan 811. I did not care for sodium silicate and soda ash. The consistency and the flow of the slip just wasn't as pretty. Um, it wasn't as stable. I couldn't, sh I couldn't keep it as long. Um, so I prefer Darvan 811. remember who told me that sheep analogy. It was in one of my workshops. Uh, I think it was one of the first ones I did. Oh, it was um, Cecilia Lanier, my wonderful friend. She told me that. I'm not sure where she heard it, but it's the perfect analogy. Okay, now you can see it's really starting to get loose, but can you see right here where it's starting to hold bubbles? I know I'm not quite there yet. And by the way, there is no recipe for the perfect slip as far as deflocculation. And the reason being is your water supply is going to affect it. Your clay body is going to affect it. Um, temperature, how long it, your reclaim has been sitting. Okay, see how that still peaks up? Can y'all see my hand? There it is. See how it still has a peak on it? But it's better than it was. So I'm getting close. Not quite there yet. And like I said, I'm doing this real time. So y'all get an idea of how long it takes to make up of that. Okay, at this point, I know I'm getting close. I'm going to add one or two more little drops. One. There it goes. So all in all, we've got about 15 drops of Darvan in there. That's it. 
You saw how little a quarter cup of water moved it, but 15 drops of Darvan really made it move. Okay, so still, I'm getting peaks. That's not what I want. But I can tell by looking at it, it's smooth, it's starting to loosen up, and I'm afraid that I'm gonna go a little bit too far with the Darvan. When it gets to that point where I know it's getting close to not forming peaks on my hands, I'm gonna add just a touch of water. Less than a quarter cup, that's maybe an eighth of a cup of water. All right, now look at how much that loosened it up. Just a tiny, tiny little bit of water, eighth of a cup. That's why you don't go too far with that water. All go at it backwards instead of starting with like uh, the slurry out of my bucket or adding a lot of water is then I've got no real control over it. I don't want to do Epsom salts and stuff like that. You see? Much better. Let's get in there. Thanks, Andrea. Okay, I'm going to go with maybe one one big drop of dark. And if you can see it while it's blending, yeah, it has that sticky look to it. Um, and I don't know if y'all can see this, but if you look really close, I don't know if y'all can, I can't zoom in any further, but you'll see dark streaks in the, in the clay. That's where the water is starting to be forced away um, from the clay. I know I don't want to go too much further than that. Can y'all see those dark streaks? Okay, so let's check it again. I'm dropping it on my hand and I'm trying to get a single drop. Okay, that's close and I'll show you how I test it. So I'm gonna stop right there and flip y'all back around. I'm gonna test it on my hand first and then flip y'all back around if it's ready. And then we'll keep going. So at this point, this is how I start testing it. Now that it's real close to what I want, I'm just going to suck some up in my little applicator bottle. Just enough to test. Using whatever tip that I would test with or what I'll be using. Just because I want to make sure that it's right for that tip. Okay, let's see. I'm going to put a little dot on my hand. And I'm going to make a dot just like I would if I was trailing it. It's got a tiny little bit of peak to it. Can y'all see my hand? But what I want to be able to do is put it on my hand and then tilt my hand sideways. Okay? And if you can tell, this angle is really weird for you guys. I'll do it again when it's upright. It's not running. But see how much more fluid it is so it doesn't have that big nasty peak on there? Now I don't have to go back and wipe my stuff down. Give it a little shake. That, that, that tip would... That would probably work for me. That would work for a thicker application. If I wanted it a little bit more fluid, um, I, like say if I was gonna do a joining slip, I would deflocculate it more. Or I would take this big bucket and I would divide it up into smaller containers. And then that way I could have a little bit for joining, a little bit for trailing, a little bit for sculptural, a little bit for you know thicker. I can deflocculate it to different, different levels. And I'm gonna trail it a little bit. Look at that nice smooth line. Can y'all see it? And look, I can hold it sideways. Oh, I can shake it really hard. And it doesn't go anywhere. Can you see? And it stayed pretty stable. All right, so I'm going to stop for a second and flip you guys back around and answer some questions. Give me just a minute. I'm sweating bullets, by the way. I am in a 120-year-old cotton mill. And uh, there's not a lot of people here right now. <laughs> Close up of a Jameson bottle. And Lysol wipes, you know, because pandemic. <laughs> There's my windows. Hey, <laughs> okay, I'm back. Let's see, how do, I get the, how do I get the comments back on? I'm going to scroll back through and answer some comments a little bit. Do, 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 do. Rose. 
Give me one minute to catch up. Okay, Shelly. Made a small batch of porcelain slip with a mini whisk this morning. First time slip trailing. I'm a heavy duty slip maker. Yeah, I go through, when I'm in full tilt production, I'll go through a five gallon bucket like that, like it's nothing. But keep in mind, I use it for different things. Like I divide it up and I color it. You know, I thin some down for, for uh, joining slip. I use some at a different consistency for sculptural stuff. So I mix up a bunch, but I go through it really quick. The ginger and Jameson Tom at the end. <laughs> and yes, Frank, the videos will be available for watching later. Can you now color the slip? I would not color it at this point. What I would normally do at this point, how am I doing on time, guys? I think I'm only about 30 minutes in. Yeah, I'm right on time. Okay. So at this point, normally what I would do is divide it up into containers if I wanted some to go in um, for different purposes. Uh, coloring slip I do in very small batches. And the reason I do uh, coloring uh, colored slip in small batches is because sometimes I'll use mason stains. And it takes a lot of mason stain to uh, get the color as true as you want it. Um, and mason stains are kind of expensive. You know, you can imagine some mason stains you're going to have to use up to, you know, 50% uh, or 30 to 50% mason stain to get pure color in, you know, that's per dry weight on your clay. And, you know, $25 a pound <laughs> adds up. So I tend to make it really small batches. Sometimes I'll also use oxides um, in my slips. And for the oxides, you know, you just have to do a line blend and test it. Oh, goodness. Hang on just a second. My battery is almost dead. Oh, there we go. The plug fell out. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I will do uh, oxides in there. I like the effect of oxides better in some ways. It's a little bit less. Um, mason stains kind of have a, you know, they're, they've already been activated. They've already been kind of fired, and they're very uh, painted looking. It's very solid. There's no interaction with your glazes much or anything like that. If you use um, oxides to color, you get a little bit more interaction, uh, both with the clay body and the, and the glazes. So you have to test everything. Trying to catch up. Am I caught up on questions? Somebody give me a nod. I'm looking back at the phone, so... Say ginger and ginger appears. It's kind of like a Beetlejuice. So I'm waiting on the questions. Just making sure. Did I cover everything? Um, just to recap in case you came in the, in, the, in the middle. I use my reclaim most of the time to uh, make my slip because it's using what I have on hand. I know that it's going to match my clay body. It's going to uh, not have any, you know, shrinkage issues or any weird interactions or, you know, it's just easy. It's what I've got. Why not use what you have? Sometimes, though, I will also use, uh, I've got a 50-pound bag of B-Mix um, that is the dry mix. For most of your clay bodies, you can call your supplier and say, hey, I'd like to get a 50-pound bag of B-Mix dry, and they will send it to you. Um, and you can mix it up that way too. Usually for that, I usually, for B-Mix, I normally start about two and a half parts clay to one part water and then mix it up. Who was the person I watched early on? Oh, John Brett. John Brett has a great video out there. If you don't quite, if you can't quite wrap your head around the idea of flocculation and deflocculation, uh, search on YouTube for John Britt deflocculated slip and it'll come up and it's a great video. It explains the basics. Um, and this is just kind of starting backwards a little further than what he did. Um, just to kind of custom it, customize it to the way I work and the way my brain works. But it's the same, it's the same process. Deflocculation is deflocculation. How long will the slip maintain that consistency? Um, here, I'll show you. Okay, this right here, this is about a month old. And this was made just a touch thicker than that. John is awesome for everything. He is one of the most generous, amazing people. Um, so this is about a month old. Let's see how thick it is. So if you look at it, like I said, it's thick to tropic. If you look at it and you stand that in there right now, it's going to be really solid. But if I mix it up really good, like I said, this was just a touch thicker than what was on there. Normally, I would uh, use a little immersion blender on these smaller containers to mix it up. 
So I'm just using a paintbrush, it's gonna take a second. This is a little bit thicker, so this was, um, wait, it's marked on the lid. This was my wave and sculptural thing. So it has a little bit of a peak. It keeps that, it keeps that consistency. Um, let's see, which one is this? I think this was trailing. Now this was joining, and this is about the same age, about a month old. So I made this a little bit looser. You had to whack it. This is a little bit looser. Let's see what it looks like. See, about the same. Um, so pretty much indefinitely, if it has, if it's open to air at all, like if you put it in a container and you leave an air gap in the top and it's not completely airtight, that water's gonna evaporate off and you may have to add a little bit of water back. Once you get it to the perfect deflocculation, I'd say within a month, you don't really have to mess with that again. What happens though is if you let it sit too long, um, especially if your clay has anything that has soluble salts in it, it starts altering the chemistry and it may kind of mess with that. So normally, my suggestion to you would be make what you're gonna use within a month period. And then after that, you're good to go. Does that make sense? I think I missed a question. What is Darvin? Uh, Darvin 811, it's not, uh, it's not the drug. <laughs> it is a deflocculant. I'm picking up the container again so you can see it. I get my, mine's from Laguna. <laughs> you can tell it, it dripped on there. To give you an idea too, it's very sticky. You don't wanna spill this stuff. This pint uh, costs about $9 and it'll last me, gosh, <laughs> a year. I mean, because you're only using a few drops at a time. I prefer John Britt, not Burrett. I prefer Darvan 811 over Darvan 7 or soda ash and sodium silicate. It's just more stable. Would you ever use diluted Darvan to deflocculate a thick glaze? I'm not, I, I would not dilute my Darvan. Um, but yes, I do use it to deflocculate a glaze. Um, <laughs> they don't make the drug Darvan anymore. Darvan, Darvan is 811 versus Darvan 7, yes. <coughs> Darvan 7 will work as well. Um, and in some ways, I guess for some people it might be a little bit easier because you, it's not quite as powerful, or not for me, I, not that I've noticed anyway, with my water and my clay body, it's not as powerful. Um, and it's not as stable. Like I found that it would not sit in a container as long as the Darvan 811 would for me. Don't know exactly why. Um, <clears throat> but uh, also it takes more. So I like the idea of just getting a few drops in there and boom, I'm done. With the Darvan 7, I had to keep putting it in there and keep putting it in there. And eventually I would get impatient and I would add too much and it would go too far. If you take your um, deflocculation too far, you'll end up ruining the slip and it'll get too thick. You can add Epsom salt solution, two parts Epsom salts to one part water, and just add a little bit of that back in the time and it'll thicken it back up. But the problem with that is you're working on a curve to begin with, and if you go too far and then you add Epsom salts and you mess up, then you don't know exactly how to get it back to the right exact point that you want, and it just doesn't work as well. Um, so if by chance you do go too far with your deflocculation, what I suggest is just adding some more dry clay to it um, or some more untouched reclaim, you know, reclaim that you have not um, added anything to, and that'll just thicken it right back up and you just blend it in. You've heard Tom Coleman say that antifreeze is also a deflocculant. Have you ever used or heard that? Um, I mean, if it's an acid or, I mean, depending on the acidity of the thing, I mean, gosh, anything could be a deflocculant or a flocculant um, if it has the right pH to it. I have not heard that, nor would I want to try that. I don't think I'd put anything in my... Um, I don't think I'd want to put anything in my clay that I wouldn't want in my hands. Does that make sense? If I'm afraid to put something in my, in my hands, I won't say eat it, <laughs> but uh, I don't recommend eating your clay. Um, but I, I just don't think I would use anything that I'm not real comfortable handling and antifreeze, I just, no, I, I would pass. But it's like, you can use vinegar. Well, vinegar is a flocculant, if I remember correctly. Um, you can use muriatic acid. You can use all these different things. But to me, Darvan 811 is the safest, the quickest, the most efficient, um, the cheapest. 
I mean, it's $9 for a pint that's going to last you two years. So it's cost efficient. It's safe. You use Darvan 7. You have never used anything else. Listening to you explain your experience with the two makes me want to try Darvan 811. I'd recommend you try it. I mean, it's 9 bucks. What do you have to lose, you know? Um, try it. Compare it. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. You can use either one. It just makes it a little bit easier. I think, if I remember correctly, Darvan 811 was originally formulated because slip casters needed something that would work better with iron bodies, with iron bearing bodies, or I may have it backwards. Um, that may have been seven. No, that was 811. Um, but, you know, for me, it just works for my purposes. So, you do use a lot more Darvan 7. Yeah, it's just not as powerful. <clears throat> and I have tested this now with over 30 different clay bodies, and I've not had it vary at all. It has been spot on. Um, it's worked with everything. I've used it with every workshop that I go to. I try, if I can remember, to get somebody to bring a water sample from wherever they're uh, from. Because even though Darvan, Darvan 811 doesn't act specifically on the pH, things like vinegar and stuff like that will. Um, uh, Darvan, or excuse me, Darvan 811. Darvan 811 is a long chain polymer. Um, but when you're changing the pH, like when things sit for a while and soluble salts come out, your water your city water supply changes because they put water softener in it or God knows what else they put in our water supply, nuclear waste, um, <laughs> and it changes the pH, it's going to affect how your slip deflocculates. Like I said, I'm in a 120-year-old cotton mill. All the pipes in the building are, you know, pot potable water, potable water, however you say it. Um, they're all PVC, but underneath this building, God knows what, you know. Um, I'm sure there's some lead in there somewhere. Also, our water supply in Huntsville is very variable. They're always tweaking it. And so ever since I've been in this building, I really have to stay on top of my um, deflocculation and flocculation and, you know, watching my glazes and stuff like that. That's one of the reasons I'm so particular about um, specific gravity in my glazes um, because it just changes all the time and I'm too lazy to deal with going and getting distilled water. <laughs> I have it, but I, I don't want to use it all the time. As somebody else, so would, just, would using distilled water be more consistent across the board? Absolutely. I mean, that would, it would just be pretty much spot on. Um, the problem is I'm on the second floor of a huge building. There's over 200 studios here, and I have no desire to lug, you know, four or five-gallon bottles of, of water up here every other week or so. Um, I go through water really quickly. Um, so I, I, I tend to stick with the water supply I have and just learn more about tweaking my own chemistry. You've been wanting to do slip with your flowers? Oh, Arlene, that would be beautiful. I think I've got, this is not the best example of one of my dogwoods, but it's one. I knocked a chunk of it off and fired it anyway. <laughs> I'm not really picky with it. But yeah, it works beautifully. Uh, if you get it really fluid, a little bit more fluid than what I showed you. Oh, I'm shaking the, the thing. Um, if you get it where when you drop it on your hand and there's absolutely no peak, and then you turn it and it just barely runs, like you can turn your hand and it won't run, but then you kind of tap your hand or shake it just a little bit and it just sags a little. That to me is like the perfect consistency for really fluid trailing. And it's still not going to flatten out. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about shrinkage again. Um, because we started with mostly clay and less water. Or I won't say mostly clay. We started with a high percentage of clay and a lower percentage of water. All those clay particles are super packed in there. They're super concentrated. Um, it's a, a potent mix of clay. Um, and it can't shrink. Like when the water evaporates, there's not that much to kind of shrink away, so it's going to stay stiff. I got sidetracked watching the comments. What was I explaining? Anyway, but that's why I start with it's thick. Um, cracking. So you know how when sometimes you'll apply it and, you, and it cracks? Um, if it's too much water, it'll flatten out. If you apply it at the wrong time, like you apply it and the clay is a little bit too dry and you've got too much water in your slip and you put it on there, that clay has already shrunk, this is not shrinking yet, then it shrinks, and this shrinks, and then it cracks. Um, would drainage from the air conditioner work? I don't know, I've never tried that. I'm a little, I won't say I'm germ phobic, but I'm allergic to mold, so if something's coming out of the air conditioner, I leave it out of the air conditioner. I don't wanna mess with it. Um, I th somebody has said that dehumidifiers is basically distilled water, <laughs> or close to it, but mm, I'm not gonna bother. Does this help?
Andrea, I saw you say something and I don't know what you said. I can't go, go far, that, that far back now. How are we doing on time? I may have run through this too fast. I was so worried about not, get, not having enough time to explain everything that I went through quick. Pottery artists are very smart people. <laughs> I've never used so much eighth grade chemistry since until I was a potter. <laughs> I can remember. Awesome. I'm glad it helps. Would, you, would I do a demo of my slip trailing if, if time permits this week? Um, not this week. I, I, I want everybody else. I mean, this is, I filled in the gap first because I, wanted to be, I was afraid nobody would sign up. <laughs> um, so I really wasn't planning on doing a demo. Um, but I want everybody else, like other artists, to have time to um, do demos. So I'll do one another time. Do you, do you do your slip work on leather hard or soft leather? Oh, that's a great thing to talk about. Thank you. I wish I had my notes in front of me from my, my regular workshop, and then I could explain all that, and I keep skipping things. Um, I have found that with deflocculated slip, normally, if you just use normal slip, it's not adjusted, the best time to apply it is kind of um, medium leather hard to hard leather hard. I think of it as like sharp cheddar cheese. It's hard, but you can kind of squeeze it and it gives a little bit. That's perfect because there's enough moisture in that and just the right enough moisture in this slip, the way I've got it adjusted, that it bonds really well. It shrinks at the same rate. Everything's good. Because um, <clears throat> it's on the outside, the slip is, so it's going to dry a little bit faster. But it, it's going to all, you know, kind of congeal together and be good to go. The nice thing about deflocculated slip is it gives you a larger window of when you can apply it. Um, I've applied this while my work was still on the wheel, like wet, 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 wet clay. And you can put it on there. You know how you do the wavy, you know, uh, take your rib and adjust it on your, um, and wiggle it on your pots and make the little waves. You can do all that type of stuff with it. Um, you can put it directly on wet work and it's not, it's not so much water in it that it's gonna break down the work at all. Um, I can do it on soft leather hard. I can do it on, you know, hard leather hard. I've done it on bone dry, like really <laughs> cheese hard. Yep. Um, if you, you can actually put this on bone dry and every once in a while it'll work. <laughs> it, it's still not ideal, but it does give you a little bit more leeway, I guess. And it's just because there's less water in it. My work and knowledge base is fantastic. Oh, wow, thank you. Well, I learned a lot of it. Um, just so you guys know, I'm going to talk about our community a little bit. Um, I got interested in pottery when I was in junior high school. Ted Metz, who is amazing. I'm going to get teary-eyed. I'm an emotional freak. Sorry. Ted Metz was um, a potter. He was a professor at the University of Montevallo. And he came to my junior high school, and he did a demo on throwing. I had never seen anybody throw a pot before, and I swear to God, I thought that was the most magic thing I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> I was just mesmerized. So I actually followed him um, from junior high school, Pelham High School. Then I went to Alabama School of Fine Arts. Um, from there, I mean, I was following Ted Metz. I was going to University of Montevallo, and I was going to be a ceramics major. Um, I had one class with Ted, and then he ended up becoming the chair of the sculpture department. And so I ended up changing my major, and I became a painting major. Didn't touch it forever. I mean, not for like 20-something years, I guess. And I became a marketing manager eventually, got into advertising. I did that for about, about a decade, I guess. And then quit my job, lost my mind, about had a nervous breakdown, just too stressed out. And Fritz, my husband, he's in the group too, if y'all might know him. Um, strongly encouraged me to get back into art. And I decided to jump back into pottery and try that again. And I thought, well, it'll be a little bit more sellable. I love it. It's an easier way for me to kind of pad that income until I find a job again. Well, next thing I know, it became a full-time job and I love it. So um, when I became that full, when I started doing pottery again, I knew nothing. I mean, I knew how to center. That was about it. I had never made a piece of functional wear. Um, I knew nothing about glazes, or nothing about making my own glazes anyway. Um, <clears throat> and I don't even remember who it was. Oh, yes, I do. Donald Bradshear. I was on Clay Buddies, and I shared, or I, I was on uh, Facebook, and I shared some of my work, and it was in some other group. And I was like, I don't know if I'm allowed to share this here. You know, I just want to whatever, put it out there. And Donald Bradshear was like, 
got just the group for you. And he introduced me to Clay Buddies back when Clay Buddies had about 2,000 members. And I would say probably 85% of what I know about Clay, about glaze chemistry, about, you know, making pots, about uh, durability, about function, about, um, I won't say sculpting because I had that before, um, but anything about functional wear and anything about glaze chemistry and anything, you know, about clay bodies, any of that stuff I learned from clay bodies, not necessarily in the group itself, but from the connections that I made in clay bodies, like Matthew Katz, John Britt, all these people I came into contact with because of clay bodies. So I'm very grateful for that. I'm big limped. Okay. Um, anyway. So, da, 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 da. Oh, somebody had a question. Slip trailing bottles and tips. Okay, I can do that. Designs on a piece of paper. That's a great tip. I'll show the slip twirling bottles and tips and groggy clay. Um, making slip from gro groggy clay. Okay, at this point, when I've got that clay perfectly adjusted, and I'm not going to do this on camera because it would be a hot mess. Um, Y'all wouldn't be able to see it anyway. At this point, I would sieve my clay. And I just take it and I run it through. This clay has no grog in it or very little. If it does, it's like micro, micro crystalline. And I run it through about an 80 mesh sieve, mainly because I have a dog, I drop chamois, bees, whatever, get all into my reclaim. I want it as smooth as possible. Um, way, way back when, I, in, years ago when I was younger, we were, I was in horticulture, and we had the saying that you never put a $50 plant in a $5 hole, which means you do your prep work on the front end, and your end results will be easier and better. You know, so you dig a good hole to plant a good tree. <laughs> so same thing with reclaim. If you take the time to really prepare it well, to sieve it, things like that. It is so much easier. Um, you don't get little blowouts as bad. You know, you don't get things popping in the firing. Uh, you don't get hair <laughs> or anything like that in um, your uh, slip. And it just makes your job easier in the long run. So if I was going to use a groggy clay, you know, I would, I would still sieve it. If you chose... If, that's really labor intensive. I guess before I chose to sieve a groggy clay, I would... Find, find out if my uh, manufacturer made that clay body without grog. They often do. Um, Laguna is really good about that. You can get you can get 60 or 65 ones with grog, ones with ones not. You can get uh, be mixed with grog or without. Um, if you are ordering by the tonnage, you can actually call them and custom order your clay the way you want it. I would probably be more apt to try to find my clay body without grog than to go through that whole process of sieving out grog, unless. You're using a larger tip for whatever style you're using, and you're okay with the grid in there. Then it'd be kind of cool. Um, I add a lot of stuff to my slip sometimes too, but that's a whole nother story. Um, slip trailing bottles and tips. Yes, I use a variety of things. Um, hair dye bottles, because obviously this is natural. Uh, <laughs> these are great for joining. Um, if I'm going to do a joining slip or anything like that, it's just I like this little angled tip because it gets in right where I need it. I don't have to wipe up as much. Like I said, I don't like wiping off chocolate chips off my slip. I don't like wiping up slip off my joints. I want to do everything as quick as possible so I can move on to the next good thing. Um, so I use these. Another one that I really like is this. I'll show you a clean one so you can see it a little bit better. Um, I order mine in bulk. So um, my supplier would be different than what most individuals would get. Um, but if you go on Amazon and you search for henna city, henna, like the Indian art, um, if you, if you Google, or excuse me, if you look on Amazon for henna city applicators, they have a set of two and they have a set of four. It's the same bottle and it's the same type of tip. And I'll show you why I like these. These are a little bit different than the ones that I had gotten from a cer ceramic supplier before. The ones that I had gotten before, they had white caps and you just push the needle on there and when I would squeeze it because sometimes I like thicker slip the back pressure <laughs> the needle would pop off um, so these are what they call lure lock tips and I don't know if you can see this can you see this is almost like a medical needle it, it goes on here and it twists on so you can put all the back pressure in the world it'll blow the bottle before it comes out of the tip it's not going anywhere um, the other thing that I like is these tips are stainless steel 
so they never rust. And then I use quilting needles in there to keep them from clogging if I set it down for a long time. Um, and the quilting needles are stainless steel, so they never rust. Um, I also use 14 gauge and 15 gauge needles. And I like a longer needle because I don't rest my hand. You know, sometimes I'll put a pinky down when I slip trail, but I don't rest my hand or the needle on the work. I like a really fluid, loose kind of exploratory line. And, you know, I find that this keeps it out of my line of sight. I, I, it's, it keeps the bottle out of my line of sight so I can really see better. Um, I do have a drawing prop. I forget what they're called. I can't get to it, but it's a little prop that when you draw, you can put your hand on to keep your hand off your drawing, keep the graphite off your paper. Sometimes I'll use that just to rest my hand, but I, I don't want anything touching the clay, um, especially because I do use colored slips sometimes. And the, if you notice, you don't see a lot of people using colored slips. There's a reason for that. If you mess up, it's there. <laughs> it's gonna be on your piece. You leave the tiniest little bit of smear clay. Even if you go back and you wipe it off, you leave the tiniest little bit of colored slip on there, it's gonna react, especially if you're using like black mason stain. It, it's gonna show that smear. And unless your work embraces that, it's probably not what you want. I'm catching up. Y'all got lots of questions, holy crap. Shrinkage, primary uh, cause of shrinkage is an uh, imbalance between water, uh, imbalance of the water between your piece and the slip. And that's why I do this. This very rarely ever cracks on me unless I intend for it to crack, as long as I'm applying it, you know, kind of toward that medium to leather hard, hard leather hard. A school demo, that's awesome. Teachers are awesome, and that's a big reason why we did this. Periscope. Paint sieve, yes, I've used a vegetable sieve, a paint sieve, everything else. I like the glaze sieve better because it's so fine. I get all the crap out of my clay and it makes it like velvet, velvety smooth, liquidy goodness when you trail with it. So you can kind of see it. This is that slip that we just mixed up. You see how smooth that is? No, no little chips on it at all. So I don't have to go back and wipe that off. Like if I did that on a piece right now, once it's there, it's there. And I can turn my hand and it doesn't run. I can get thick lines, straight lines. Where did I get the trailer with the angled tip? Sally's Beauty Supply. <laughs> um, beauty Supply stores have them. Uh, they're about $2. That's another reason I like them because I, I'm frugal with my money. Um, like I make everything myself if I can. I made my spray booth. I buy stuff in weird places just because it's cheaper. I like supporting um, my suppliers, my ceramic suppliers when I can. But if I can find a product that I prefer, you know, I'm going to have to do it. Um, oh, one other thing about these that I like. I'm going to show you something. This one is five years old. And see how soft it is? You can kind of hear it's starting to get a little pop to it. But this is a food grade plastic. So it's super soft, BPA free. It lasts forever. They don't dry rot. I've left these sitting in the sun, I've left these wet, I left them dry, I left clay in them, and they're great. The reason, another reason I like these besides the fact that I can buy them in bulk and they're soft is I like the way that these fit in my hand. I can hold it like a pencil, I can hold it overhand. I have kind of freakishly small hands for somebody my size. I'm almost, I'm almost six feet tall and my hands are teeny tiny nanny. And uh, this one, I can get my hand around. My hand doesn't grip those bulbs very well. They work great, but they just, I can't grip it, it doesn't feel natural to me. And this is more adjustable, I can hold it from all sorts of angles, you know, depending on what I'm doing. <laughs> and it doesn't hurt my hand. You've been fighting with the correct mix and thickness for slip. Yeah, Erica, the whole thing is start thick and just adjust little incrementally. And it takes a little bit longer on the front end, but by the time you get it done, it's like spot on perfect. Did I miss more questions, y'all? How am I doing on Tom, let me look. I'm right on it. I've got nine minutes. Whiskey break. That frog in my throat is almost gone. <laughs> You're welcome, Ruby. I, I hope that helped you guys. I know that that was not like creative. It was not um, showing you application on work and it's not, as, it's not very pretty. But to me, that has been one of the most important skills that I've de developed in my, in my studio as far as you know, the way I do it. And, and plus, 
the creative part is up to you guys. I mean, the creative part is the individual. That's your own voice. So I almost hate teaching like application technique. And, the, and when I do workshops, I, I do it kind of weird um, because like you, you teach a, a specific style. When that person leaves, it's stuck in their head for weeks. And I don't mind people copying, you know, my style for a while. We all move on and whatever, but it doesn't help them to kind of move through it faster. Um, so I teach like more basic things and it kind of uh, <coughs> helps that person move right into their own approach to it. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, whiskey is fine. The, the Sue, thank you for asking. That foot thing, that was a memory from a couple of years ago that I shared. Somebody asked about workshops. How many do I hold a year? I hold four to six in my own studio most of the time. I thought I just coughed on myself. And then I do travel quite a bit. I'm, I'm in a workshop at least once, if not twice a month, 12 months out of the year, usually. Kathy, you're very welcome. You know, this, this week has been amazing for me. You know, this pandemic, it's, it's made me crazy. It made me so neurotic. If you notice that there's nobody else in this building. Um, and I would come into my studio to work, and it was so silent and so empty. It just broke my heart. I couldn't stand it. So this is the first time I've been back in the studio in over a week. Um, and I forgot where I was taking that. I got teary-eyed, so I stopped because I got embarrassed. <laughs> anyway... Whiskey does help. Well, the whiskey is purely medicinal this time, for real. My throat, it, I'm not sick anymore, but I damaged my vocal cords because um, I was coughing for like six weeks. Um, and it actually does really help. I'm not saying that I won't day drink after this is over. Oh, but organizing, organizing workshop week, that's what I was talking about. Um, doing this, it, you know, it, I love organizing things. I organize, I help organize the Alabama Clay Conference. I used to organize trade shows in Vegas years ago. Um, that's kind of my jam. I like orchestrating things, so it's really cool. Um, it was a little bit more work than I expected. <laughs> On the front end, it was easy. Once it started, it got a little bit, it was just like doing a conference. <laughs> Imagine that. So really appreciate the people. Make sure you tell the people at NSICA and your state clay conference, thank you, because it's tough work. Um, online's even weirder, because you can't just go talk to the person. Um, but anyway, I'm glad y'all enjoyed it, because it got me through some kind of rough spots with anxiety about the pandemic. Um, so I'm glad it kind of helped you guys too. I'm going back. Ooh, y'all are throwing it at me. Or either, you made a large batch of porcelain slip a few years ago and used Darvan 7, but didn't use much at the time. It's very thick now. What can you do to thin it? Well, Ramona, if that, if that uh, slip has been sitting a long time, the first thing that I would do is adjust the water a little bit. You want to mix it until it gets to that, um, huh. You know, I don't know. That's, that's kind of tricky. If it's been sitting that long, I would reconstitute it first because more than likely you've lost water. So I'd add water back and then just kind of inch it, inch it, inch it, and do test tiles. You know, doing it a few years ago, I've never had any slip sit that long, so I don't know. I'd like for you to PM me, though, and I would donate my time to walk through that with you and help you document it because that would help me in my workshops um, <laughs> so, because I don't have any slip that's been sitting for a year. So if you don't mind being a guinea pig, <laughs> I'll walk you through it. <laughs> just send me a friend request if we're not already connected. Um, if not, just PM me and I'll, I'll find the message. That was for Ramona. I'm watching, watching. What you can la, 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 la. God, y'all are fast. Thanks for generously sharing my info. You've helped me. When, oh, why is it let me push the buttons, y'all? It won't let me push the buttons. I've always helped you when you ask questions. Huh? Oh, you are very welcome. My past lives, this was a little bit different uh, for me. Usually my lives are more about being social, to be honest, than they are really teaching. Um, my workshop style if, uh, is, is a lot different. My, my instructional style, whether it's online or off is what I'm trying to say, is a lot different. Um, I, I tend to stay a little bit more focused, but usually when I do live feeds, I'm just rambling, you know, and I'll answer questions and I share what I do and hopefully it helps somebody. But it's more about having a good time and being social. Sip a uh, cough drops. Yeah, thanks, Shauna. I've tried all the cough drops. This is actually damage. So 
It may be permanent. I do not know. Any possibility of making an annual event? Yes. And could you do a dip? And could you dip a vase in your bucket of slip to get a thick, funky texture? Let's find out. I've got three more minutes. Hang on. <laughs> well, actually, I don't, I don't know if I want to use this one because that one's trimmed. I think I have some bases right here. We will find out. Ah, oh, screw it. I can always throw another one. Let's try it. You want to see it turned upside down? Yeah, I'm so afraid that I'm going to do this, and then my phone is going to go bloop right down in there. So can you all see okay? This is bone dry. Okay, deflocculated to this degree and unsieved. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to dry pretty. It's bubbling. You can see the air bubbles coming out. See it? That's way too dry and too much water. That's going to break it down. But yeah, you could get some texture. Probably if I was going to try something like that, I'd leave it a little bit thicker. A little bit thicker. Like you can do stuff like this. I mean, you can put it on something and then smear it and get your texture in it like that. But yeah, if I was going to do it where... I think you just did that so I'd get clay all over the place, didn't you? <laughs> um, if I was going to use it for dipping a piece on it, I would do it at leather hard. Um, hard leather hard and dip it in there and the slip would be a little bit thicker. <sighs> My southern voice, I can't get away from that. And I got a double whammy, Ruth. I've got a speech impediment. I had a really good speech therapist and so she helped me. But I've, I've got the southern accent and a slight speech impediment. So my voice comes out really odd. Thanks for sharing all that stuff. I think I saw you share my website earlier, Andrea. I really appreciate that. Okay, one minute. I'll show you this. This is the other thing I do. One of the most valuable tips I can give you if you're into slip trailing or want to be is if you're using bottles like this, when you're about to slip trail, hit it on the table really hard. I call it, you know, burping the bottle. You're burping it so all the air comes to the top. Make sure all your clay is as low as it can go and your bubbles as full as it can be. When you flip it over to actually slip trail, shake it and pop it. I, I call it popping the bottle. Pop it and see how my thumb is slightly pushing in. As soon as I feel, you can feel that slip hit the bottom of the bottle. I keep a slight amount of pressure on there all the time. If my hand's on the bottle, I've got a slight amount of pressure. But see how that, that clay is not going to drop out of there. And that way, when I start slip trailing, it's not going to, that's pretty. Sorry, I got lost. Uh, <laughs> so if I uh, slip trail, it's not going to burp, you know, all over my piece. As long as you don't let air suck back in, it's going to be fine. If I stop and pick it up, I stop and just raise it over. When I start again, I just pop it one more time and just keep on going. And you barely, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to do the bend and snap, Stephanie, but that's totally what it's like. Oh my God, I gotta stop. <laughs> um, if anybody doesn't know what bend and snap is, you can Google that. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it for you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks guys. I'm gonna go cry now. <laughs> I'm laughing so hard. God, it's hot in here. Oh, one last thing. Shameless pug for Low Mill. Um, Low Mill is the nation's largest privately owned arts facility. We have over 200 artists. We have over 150 studios. It's privately owned. Um, we have 24 hour access as um, artists and our rent is very cheap. It is fabulous. Um, the owner is a great patron of the arts. It's wonderful. My applicators are two ounces. Okay, love you, Mina. Gotta go, bye.